Hey there. So if you are the type of person that really struggles with having tough conversations and giving feedback in all its forms, then I want you to know that this conversation that I'm about to have with Bianca is going to be one that really resonates with you. So yes, today is NMA Spotlight Day, and today I am having a conversation with one of our graduated students, Bianca. Now, in this conversation with Bianca, I am talking all about tough conversations. Actually, I have her go back to the very beginning of when she started in her management role and kind of like the tension points that she had, one of which was feeling like she was alone. And then of course, the second one was around challenging and difficult conversations that those two things were things that she struggled with quite a bit. And so I asked her to walk us through her roadmap or the steps that she took to overcome both those challenges. And I got to say, there was a lot of nuggets. So I'm really excited to be able to bring this conversation to you today. Now, before we dive into this, I just want to say to Bianca, because I know you still watch my videos, I just want to say to you, like, I am so, so very proud of you for so many reasons. I mean, the arc of your journey has been an exquisite one, and that is because of the commitment and the grit that you put into being an impactful leader forget that, an impactful person. So I miss you dearly, <laughs> but I know that we will catch up very soon and I can't wait till then. All right, to everybody else, let's dive into the conversation. Well, hello, Bianca. Thank you so much for being willing to have this conversation with me. I am so, so genuinely excited that you're here. Um, I feel as though your insights or nuggets, as you like to say, <laughs> are going to be super, super helpful for people watching. And so I cannot wait for us to dive in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's a privilege. Thank you, Mac. Oh, I just adore you. Okay, so let's just dive right into this. Can you tell me or tell us about your beginnings as a people manager? Definitely. Uh, I'd say uh, it definitely started out very fast. <laughs> it didn't let up. It really didn't let up. Um, I really had to step into a new role. Um, I had a unique situation with just a developmental like promotional opportunity. So it happened very, very quickly and evolved um, into more pieces than I kind of initially understood <laughs> upon, uh, you know, taking that that opportunity. Um, but I would really characterize it of, as being like very fast paced and just needing, needing to learn to operate in a, in a new space, in a different co company culture as well. Um, right. I was in a previous de department or different department prior to this role. Um, so that definitely was a factor in taking on uh, a people management role. Um, and then just finding a new rhythm to manage the workload of others um, and balancing you know, my workload as well. Um, so trying to find the right approach was definitely, uh, it was trial and error at points and pieces. Um, but, uh, yeah, trying to essentially like establish like how I would interact with the new team, how I would kind of present to them where we were going in, in terms of our, uh, manager, um, staff member relationship. Um, and so I'd say just that that's essentially where it started and, and just identifying like, okay, where do I need to grow in my management style? Because although I had previously managed in the past, it was in different organizations and it was different types of work groups. Um, so this definitely was a new experience um, with just, yeah, different um, service area, I'll say, in terms of the staff that I was uh, overseeing. Um, so I definitely... I guess I'd butt it up and saying like it, it tested many of my limits and, and it really expanded my perspective a lot as well. Um, the one thing I think I'd really hone in on though, is that it um, expanded my perspective on just communication <laughs> and like what all the different facets are that go into it um, and the different approaches and the different tactics. Um, and this experience really also just highlighted areas where I needed to grow and in areas that I'm like, Oh, I thought I kind of had this down. I felt confident in certain areas. Um, but just having to make little changes here and there based on the people that I was working with. Um, so yeah, that, that would be the beginnings. That so was the beginning. 
a lot more after that. <laughs> you had a lot. Like I remember on our first initial call, like I don't know if you remember Bianca, but you were like, it was almost like your hair was standing up a little bit, you know, because <laughs> you were like, there's a lot going on. And this is a developmental opportunity. And I remember you saying like, I want to get this right. Like I want to do this role justice because it could be a potential for so much more. And I also want to be in the moment and do it justice as well. But there's all of this happening. So just like hearing you like go through that, I'm like, oh yeah, it brought back that conversation that we had. It was- I love yeah. that you remember that. I do. So I mean, I shouldn't expect anything less from you, Mac, but that that is very true. I remember our first call and and um, I just was like, I, I need to get this right. Because not yes. only was it, and it, it was a exciting opportunity, like I said, for me to grow, but it mattered and it still matters to me, but so much that the others that I'm working with are, you know, it's a meaningful experience. It's thoughtful, even though it was, um, you know, for a limited period of time, um, I really wanted to make sure that I was giving it my, my best, um, and not make it, um, entirely experimental yeah. <laughs> some intention and strategy so yeah I remember our first call and and that being something that I was just like okay this is a really big pie right now how do yes. I how do I slice this up and and you know get to the tactical level which we'll talk about in a bit because NMA definitely took me there <laughs> you're hilarious yes but I do remember that and I also remember us hitting it off right away like it was such easy conversation right away so feels like full circle. Um, okay. So a lot going on when you first started. So then what made you, and I know you kind of alluded to it as you were kind of talking about your beginnings of a manager, but what made you ultimately decide like, Hey, I need an MA, like what was going through your mind that made you go, okay, yes, I need this program. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I kind of alluded to it already in terms yeah. of like my my role expanding and evolving very quickly. And, you know, when that opportunity presented, I, I kind of, I just looked back into my experience, like, okay, what am I going to need to take out of my tool belt or my toolbox really right now in, in this assignment? And what do I need to dust off from like my previous management experience? Cause it had been um, a little while since I had a directly supervised staff. Um, so it was like, all right, you know, I've done this before. What do I need to bring back out? Um, but I recognize that I did need to take it to a different level because like I mentioned, a different department, different service area, different culture. You know, I had, I've had i grown also since those past experiences. So right. anyway, all of that occurred to me. And then the timing was like, all right, well, I got to do this as quickly as possible <laughs> uh, because the onboarding into the new role happened very quickly. So I, I really just kind of came to this point where I recognized I needed to expand and supplement um, like my professional connections and support network outside of my day-to-day -day interactions at, at work. Um, mm -hmm. Though I had my manager to lean on, um, I really felt like I needed to um, supplement that with something more. And, and I was also just in a place where, um, well, this is just kind of my own personal um, value. Just I'm a lifelong learner. I'm always a student. So it felt like no. it's time to get back in a setting. Uh, right now, this is a good opportunity uh, to align and um, yeah, put myself in the student seat while I'm uh, working through, you know, this, this opportunity. So I started browsing online, looking for, in, in initially just looking for resources, you know, okay, yeah. let's kind of really decide which, for, which management framework and like leadership style I want to really embrace for this assignment, um, pick up some best practices and just kind of attempted to prep myself I didn't quite <laughs> think that I would dive right into like a, a program um but I thought well I mean well I didn't really yeah have it, one expectation entirely but I knew I needed to dig up resources and just get myself um uh ramped up if you will and um so yeah I started looking online started reading things um and then I ran into your channel on YouTube and it's history from there. No, no I was like, whoa, like this is wonder. Wow. Okay. So started watching some of that. I didn't even, I'm like, I just remember being like in a zone, like just watching NMA stuff or videos from your NMA channel. And I'm like, 
oh dang I don't really feel like I need to look much further um I feel like just even this alone the content is so rich and your videos are like immediately actionable um and they just touch yeah. on on like key things like you don't leave any stone unturned <laughs> I mean, videos even like just the difficult even awkward scenarios of what of what managers face when in managing people so so anyway that was me like starting out and stumbling upon your channel and just for the record i still watch your youtube really? <laughs> they're so good um so you have a, a lifetime fan here with me <laughs> team Mac. <laughs> um so yeah it just even in and watching your your materials and and the products that you have online I I really um was just like wow this woman is so gifted <laughs> in her ability to teach and to like really frame out like like I was trying to say like the nuanced topics around management practices and you and you do it in such a digestible way and you articulate like the very, very, um, yeah. everything in between that I'm, some of them, I'm like, I never thought of that. I thought that this approach was just, you know, <laughs> two parts and actually it's eight. Oh dear. <laughs> you know, and a contingency plan over here. Uh, I'm like, this is my dream come true. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah. So deciding to, to join NMA was like, all right, well, I need to talk to her. I need to speak with her and find out what more is in the program if there's this much that she's giving out freely? Like, I got to go see what this is about. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So just why did I decide to join? Yeah, coming back to that question, like once you and I did speak and I understood more about how you have the new manager accelerator program framed down, um, it really hit on key things that, like I said, I wasn't entirely like I said, in a mindset that I was necessarily going to sign up for a program, but this definitely moved me in a direction where I was like, okay, this actually seems like the right, I know what I need to do. Let me find out more. And so then it was like, all right, well then let me talk to her and learn about hers before, you know, I look around or whatever that's going to entail. Um, and I really loved how, you know, in our introductory call, you described just how the modules, well, one that it's an online learning platform. Um, the modules are self-paced. Um, you have a wonderful just outline in terms of the journey of the program. Um, and like I said, there were things where it was like, oh yeah, you know, these are areas that I'd like to grow in that I, I was aware of. And then it was like, oh, these are areas that I wasn't, I haven't even turned, you know, touched these, some of these stones. Um, mm -hmm. So it was evident to me, like I, I was going to get so much from this if I were to join. Um, and then you just took it to another level with the weekly coaching calls, the um, support network that you develop with the cohorts of an NMA. So it's just kind of like, wow, all right, well, this is a <laughs> wonderful opportunity. Um, and honestly, it was just like, yeah, I, I need to join. Will she accept me? <laughs> and I hope I'm a good fit for her program. Um, so, so yeah, that was why I decided to join. Um, and yeah, and maybe like the last nugget would just be like wanting to learn um, from a subject matter expert as well. Like I, I love the the mentorship and like the um, just the camaraderie like among colleagues. And I have colleagues at work that we share experiences and we support each other, and that's wonderful. But that's a different um, flavor, right? Yeah, flavor. Yeah. It's not necessarily um, doesn't have the same depth as if you know you're going to someone who this is their their bread and butter this is you know and that's you so it was like all right I need to link arms with Mac and also just be around that environment and, and um you know we might get to this a little more where I can highlight just the peer network um of being in the cohorts with NMA I loved it I loved it and I needed it and I'm so glad I, I did it <laughs> <laughs> I this is this is why I love doing these like sessions these interviews because I get to hear like the full like journey and thought process that you guys went through that I had no idea right because when you guys jump into the program it's like we just like hit the ground running of like let's solve your issue let's get into these challenges and things like that and so I don't really get to hear all this stuff in the background so <laughs> this is really cool thank you Bianca oh, yeah. I'm so glad I'm so glad that you somehow like stumbled across me on YouTube and then made that decision to reach out because it has been 
an awesome, like, obviously it's been awesome to watch your journey, but it's been like a great privilege for me to get to know you as well. And we forged like a friendship and a, a bond yeah. that I'm really, oh. I'm really grateful for. So I'm so thankful. So Mac, it's so, it's just, I have to remind myself that we've only been online virtually because I'm like, this is my girl. Uh, this is like, oh my gosh, you're, you're awesome. You're just so easy to connect with. And it's so um, genuine and authentic. And I appreciate it so much. I'm forever grateful that but we've had this time together. It's a mutual. Me too. Me too. Really, really grateful. So much so that I'm like, I don't ever want to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but I know we won't. I know we won't. Yeah, we'll stay connected somehow. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So part of the program, right, as you know, is making that practical application of what you're learning. And one of the ways that we do that throughout the program is through uh, dialogue around tough conversations. We role play it. How has, and you, my friend, have been fantastic at volunteering to be part of those practical application role play sessions, which I know is not easy. And so I want to talk to you about how has putting yourself in that sphere and making yourself a little bit uncomfortable um, helped you in your capacity to have challenging conversations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a this is a good question. I, <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate you um, sharing that your perspective, and I and I really appreciate the um, yeah and the encouragement because you're talking about where I am now or in the recent months. But I am being completely honest. At the beginning, they were so hard. They were they were so challenging for me to settle into. Like I knew I needed the role plays. Um, but I, and that was one thing in the program that I immediately noticed. I was like, wow, I am so uncomfortable with like trying, like even just being, you know, called on. I'm like, please don't call on me. Please don't call on me at the beginning. <laughs> I kind of always did. Well, not at the very beginning, oh, but no, like closer the to the end. Yeah. 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 No, you definitely gave me time yeah. <laughs> to be like, you know, what's going on now. <laughs> Uh, but I'm just sharing just like that own personal, like that self-reflection of like, okay, I'm noticing how, how like the discomfort I'm feeling around this and even my reluctance to like kind of engage in, in the uh, exercise, you know, cause it was like, why am I, you know, it started highlighting things that I'm like, okay, I'm nervous about handling this part of the conversation, or I only know how to take the conversation maybe to this far or to this point. Um, so, and that was okay. It was just a process that I needed to go through. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, those were like indicators that prompted me into like, all right, I need, this is exactly why I need to engage more and just kind of work past that threshold, that kind of tolerance level that I had of like, I just want to listen and, and I'll absorb. And that is one way that I do, I know about my learning style, like that does help me, but I, had to keep reminding myself that I joined NMA to challenge myself at a different level. So it was going to have to, it was going to have to take more for me to, um, you know, just say, all right, I'll do this one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to fall on my face, but that's okay. Cause Mac is going to catch me. And did she not? She did every time. <laughs> uh, but really that those, those role plays and that, that um, environment that really just cultivated that, that dialogue practice and, um, the pivoting, right. Of like, where could it go? And really dismantling kind of like the, um, the, what is it? Um, just, or confronting like, okay, well, what, like the role plays really allow space and, um, time for discussion on like, okay, why did you pause there? Why did you take, uh, you know, the right turn when maybe you should have just left it open. Um, and so that became evident to me week after week. I'm like, wow, like I didn't realize, you know, that I was kind of gearing this conversation this way. Um, and Mac is bringing this to my attention in a very, you know, um, dignified, supportive um, way and bringing, give, you know, providing me with tactics that I could you know, start to take with me in my little backpack over here. Um, so yeah, the role plays were, 
were pivotal for me in the NMA program. And, um, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad that, uh, of course, that I was able to overcome just that reluctance at the beginning, whether you noticed it or not, maybe you did. I, I think you notice everything. <laughs> um, I did notice. That's why I kept uh, asking you to do it after a while. I was like, well, she's killing it now. So let's just keep going. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about killing it, but you more were willing, more willing yeah. to try. But that's the key though. Yeah, that is very true. That's the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce is that you're willing to do it. You're willing to engage. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And that definitely expanded my capacity to exactly. just um, engage, explore, and even just, you know, showing that humility, like, I'm not really sure where to take this right now. Can you help me? Um, that's the key, that, bro. I needed those loops to get that muscle, you know, developed in myself at a, at a different level. Again, yeah. a feeling like I had those qualities in different areas of, of who I am as a person, but really seeing it completely intersects in, in this environment as well. And so this is where I see, I can elevate my communication and my approach and, um, um, just that foresight of like how this conversation might go and letting go also letting go of like, it has to go this way or that way. So um, yeah, the practical application, I mean that the role plays are a, a big part of it, but there's just so much dialogue in that, in that space of you giving immediate feedback um, to us as students and then also hearing from our uh, peers yeah. And like that, that was so helpful. And um, really um, just, I loved it. it it's just, it, it was just, it married well. <laughs> it complimented really well. <laughs> and it's just like, was a core piece of the enemy program. So it wasn't like here and there. It's like, no, we're going to consistently tackle this. And we're going to confront <laughs> these little areas where maybe um, like someone for like myself, like, oh, I kind of withdraw when I get to this point of the conversation or I would treat a bit. Oh, right, and it's right. like, okay, we're going to, we're going to get over that and, and we're pushing through. So um, yeah, the, the role plays really, um, I'd say truly challenged me to step out of my comfort zone. Uh, they also simulated very realistic <laughs> and relatable work situations. Um, Mac is very gifted and just, um, flowing with what with the scenario I mean they'll come up you know just in the um and it, like organically within the group's conversation and she'll like let's do that right now what do you mean right now you mean next time no right now <laughs> uh it's like okay she is uh, about her business let's do this <laughs> no delay necessary right. y'all are here to learn man y'all are here to grow so <laughs> Yeah, and I love that. I love that about you and, and, and that you have, um, that your program has the ability to, to harness that and just take on those opportunities. Um, uh, because many of them, uh, though there are planned role plays, um, you, the spontaneous ones are also just really, really, um, invaluable. So, so yeah, those, that setting, like those exercises, um, really, really helped me develop my communication skills, uh, develop new tactics, uh, more tactics. And I would absolutely say expanded my capacity to, you know, the, the Bianca at the beginning of this program, I would, I would say it expanded my capacity to tolerate challenging conversations, but really what I could look back at now and say is it's not so much that I can tolerate them. Now I'm willing, I'm willing to engage and it's not so much of when I say tolerance, it's like, there's some dread. There's some kind of sub, you know, undertone of like dread have to do this. And, and I mean, sure. Yes. There's an, there's an obligation because there's a responsibility, but um, there's a different level of willingness that I was like, wow, I didn't know I had this. And wow, this has actually even propelled me to have challenging conversations in other environments of my life. Goodness gracious. This blessed me in many ways. So it's thank you. Say that. Oh yeah, you're welcome. But it's funny you say that because I was talking to Nalisa like a couple of weeks ago and she actually said, she's like, now I feel more comfortable having conversation, like difficult, challenging conversations within my family that I didn't realize that like I was holding back from. And I was like, really tell me more. 
it's so interesting but really we grow as individuals right, grow. And I mean, that's not a secret like you lead nma with that you're like this is personal growth on a public platform as you're managing like there's that's not a secret that's not a spoiler alert like that is a fact but you know when you're not aware entirely of what you're not where you're not as skilled or as polished like you don't you don't realize like oh i'm not exactly showing up like this is not my first or second approach in the work environment. I wonder if this is my, not my first or second approach somewhere else. And so it really intersects and, and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. Honestly, it's really, um, has, um, taken my ability to approach and engage in challenging conversations in all areas of my life. And I'm so happy about it. (laughs) I'm so proud of you because that would not have happened for you, Bianca, if you weren't willing. And that's why I keep saying that's the key. It's like that person that like wants to get fit and go to the gym, but never steps foot in the gym because they're like nervous about people looking at them. Mm -hmm. Are they going to build that muscle mass that they want? Are they going to reach their goals? No, they have to get over that hump first. And that's why I've been always so like just encouraged and inspired by your willingness to, 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 to get in there. Yes. At the beginning, it was hard, but after a while you were just like, all right, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter who's looking, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if I look a little bit silly, like trying to bench press this thing, I'm just going to do it. But that's the only way you learn because then, then your coach can go, okay, I need you to actually like go like this mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Totally know what you mean. And oh, the yeah. whole- it's like, oh, I know how to do this. And it's like, well, let's change. No, the form is a little off. Exactly. That's the tactical level that I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, I thought I had, I felt confident. I felt confident. That wasn't necessarily wrong to feel right. confident, but it was like, oh, okay, that this was a little bit of a blind spot. Thank right. you for pointing it out. I'm glad you're here to see. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and also like you, you clicked on that humility to be like, I can accept this too. I mean, that's like, something I feel like everybody in the program is really good at is like the humility of like accepting the feedback and being willing and open to hear the feedback. I think that's the other component of it, of it too, is like being willing to put yourself out there, but also just being willing to hear like where you could have adjusted. Cause that that's also like hard, especially if you, like you said, already feel somewhat confident. You're like, well, I thought I was, I thought I had the form, right? It can be hard to be like, actually, you got to step back a little, or you got to put your, put your butt out a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) yep. That's humility. Sure. You guys are awesome. Okay. So you've mentioned in various like settings, like I know you've mentioned it in the calls and you've mentioned it several times here on this call, um, the weekly sessions and how just sitting in the room with the other accelerator students has been such a value for you, a value add for you. Can you explain like what you think is like the best part of that group dynamic? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I love the, the synergy that kind of comes out of that time together. And it's, it's also just a really a cool concept of how, you know, students kind of phase in and we're at different parts of or different stages of the NMA program. Um, but what really stood out to me, and and like I mentioned too, when I started learning more about NMA, it was like, I do want to be a, around others who, who are working toward a mutual goal, who have this desire to learn, who are willing to sit in the student's you know, seat. Um, uh, and so I really enjoyed uh, just that environment and that consistent, like, okay, I this is part of my week. Like there is no end if or but about it. Like, Wednesday is my day and I'm going to see my people, you know, and I'm going to meet new people. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I loved the synergy that was that, that space cultivates um, and really just getting to see people's what's, what was really fun too, is everyone's personality, right. Coming out and, Hey, this is what happened today. Or I follow, you know, I'm in module, you know, five, you know, whichever session, um, and I, and I'm implementing this, this framework and this is how it's going. And, um, just hearing like all of the, the, um, there are a lot of funny stories along the way. Uh, so just even that, I'm light dying. 
that lightheartedness was just like, wow, like, thank goodness we can all exhale a bit. And of course we're here to learn and we're going to make the most of this time together. Um, so we're not just messing around, but like there were so many times where we just could have a good laugh about things um, and just genuinely check in with people, you know? And I, um, yeah. And I, I really love that, that space of the weekly cohorts um, really just gave us that real time opportunity, that, that opportunity to, to engage in real time, you know, share what was going on that week and the flavors would fluctuate. <laughs> um, that's for sure. Uh, but what was really neat too, was that there were, there were when I was in it and are, I'm sorry, you know, different, um, a variety of different professional industries and sectors in the group. And that was very appealing to me also, um, where it was like, wow, like this is really cool. I'm getting a lot of diverse perspectives on how someone's handling this and, um, you know, whatever it might be, healthcare, you know, government sector, um, private sector, uh, just information technology, like, oh, wow, that's really neat. And, and also just to kind of see the intersections where like, yeah, management, there's principles, people are going to encounter similar challenges. Um, and there's going to be some similar tools, different approaches, different tactics in those respective sectors. Um, but to kind of see where we intersected and even to hear how kind of you would problem solve with people in different environments. Um, and it really came about a lot to like, we couldn't get that what like one-on-one -on -one interaction with you anywhere else, but that setting. Yes, we always had access to you. And I will, I will mention that the lifeline that you were, but like that setting just gave us the opportunity to, um, engage with you in a way where you could tease things out of our questions and out of our discussion um, that you can't get that from just watching someone's YouTube video or following their how-to guide or, or whatever. Um, so that was really fun about, about the, the group setting and the group dynamic. Um, so I loved it. And then I, I think I, I would just close with saying like, I, I gained a lot of wisdom, like a wisdom was imparted into me, even just being though virtually, but still it, it just overflowed in that setting from being around other NMA students. Like I was able to observe po positive qualities about them, um, including like you mentioned humility, like, okay, you know, that's what gave me the courage and the boldness to be like, I'm volunteering next week. Like, everyone's doing it. Like, this is where I need to go. This is where I need to get. Um, and so being in that group environment and seeing that modeled and observed was like, I want to adopt that. I want more of those qualities in my character and in my, you know, um, who, who I am. Um, so I really enjoyed that time being around my fellow NMAers. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it's so funny what you just said, which is that like, it encourages you. It, it just goes back to that thing like iron sharpens iron, right? Like you just become so much better when you're around people that are striving for better. I think one of the things that I've heard in different like contexts from some of the students is that at work, they're surrounded by people that are not necessarily learners who are not necessarily trying to better themselves. And so it can feel like a lonely endeavor where they're like trying to resource themselves to be better. But when they come into the room with other people that are striving to do, do better in general, then it makes them feel like, okay, this, this is normal. It becomes normalized as yeah. opposed to feeling like it's just this, you're this one person that's fighting the grain in this like culture that could be potentially toxic or that is just not like focused on being the best version. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah, I could feel stagnant and yep, I would absolutely agree with that. And, and, um, even just, you know, to, to take it a step further, I'd say like, yeah, that commitment of everyone being there, like yeah. it, that, even on days where it was like, man, I'm like running late, you know, getting off of work. I may not make it to the class or I'm exhausted. It was like, no, I am committed. Like everyone there is striving toward this. Like, uh, this is important to me. And, and, it did become my new standard of, of like mm -hmm. at a different level, not that I wasn't growth oriented or minded before, but it really did yeah, set a new um, normal. Like this right. is what we do. We're here to learn. Everyone, you know, is coming from 
most of us a, a day's work already. And it's yeah. like, wow, we're still engaging and giving, you know, our best um, to sit in this environment and learn and to share and to contribute. Um, and so, yeah, group calls. I, I hope that you guys took note of that. Cause what you just said there, Bianca is really powerful, which is the fact that like, you are committed. You guys became the people that are committed. That is now a characteristic of who you are. Yeah. It definitely refined that for me. It took my commitment definition to a different level. To a different I mean, level. Yeah, it was like, wow, thought I thought I know I thought I could commit to things and just do them. And it's like, no, like we're pressing through. Cause yeah. there were weeks, there were weeks where it was brutal. It was like, Mag, like I'm tired. Oh yeah. The work is heavy right now. This is going on. There's all these situations and it's just like, I don't have that much space left or like bandwidth to like take in more, but it's like, no, I mean, I do. And and I appreciated that too, because you would take note, like you noticed when some of us were just kind of a little low energy and even times where it's like, no, we're not going to talk about the, the mess that happened today. And it's Max like, something's a little off. Are you okay? You know? And I appreciated that because it was, it was always very genuine. And, and, um, it was just like, yeah, I'm a little low energy, but I am here and I'm, I'm engaging. And, um, you were very, um, attuned to that about each of us. So appreciate it. I love you guys. I really do. I mean, we spend so much time together. (laughs) I want to make sure my peeps are okay. Um, thank you for sharing that. So something else that you mentioned on in this conversation, actually, when you started talking about your journey as a manager, you said, you know, I found you on YouTube and there's so much content and I I felt like, well, what more does she offer? Right. And, but you were saying it within the context of like, I'm sure she offers more than what's just here. This is surface level, but sometimes managers kind of feel like, well, there's already so much rich content on her YouTube channel. Like, what can I possibly, what more can I possibly get? Actually, I just got off a call with somebody who was like, Mac, like, honestly, you share so much. What, like, what can be possibly different? So (laughs) I'm curious, like from your perspective, what you think the difference is. Yeah, absolutely. And I could relate. I had the same question. I'm like, what what else? Like, goodness gracious. Like I could just spend a couple of months going through all of this material, you know, and have my own little program. No, I don't recommend that route though. The videos are helpful and you, sh- and they should be, you know, used. I think the difference um, for me was like, all right, where, where am I going to map out like the application of this and the accountability to do it and, and, and have some guidance, have some advice, you know, or be advised also, because yeah, I could take, you know, um, my best attempt to say, okay, I'm going to take this piece of what I saw on her YouTube channel, this, this, and this, and I'm going to, you know, customize like my own plan, but I'm, mi- I, I'm potentially missing and very likely it would have been in my case, had I gone that route, um, you know, like just the perspective of someone of the subject matter expert and really just the way that you map out the program, the pace of the program. Um, and I can't emphasize enough the nuances that are like built into the program. I mean, you have um, toolkits and like bonus bags and things that it's like, oh my gosh, like she went there. Like she, she, this is, she didn't even have to put this in the program. And the, there's so many extra pieces not not only is the program just very comprehensive and and you can't get that it just watching a youtube channel um but above that it's like then you have like this whole these other things that you iterate on as we the cohorts bring our problems to you and you saw you help us solve them so yeah the, i would definitely uh highlight that you know the application doing that with some strategy and tact, um, the accountability, uh, of not only you checking on us and it's not even just you checking, but it's really that group share too, like that discussion of like, okay, I'm still on this module. That's fine. Let me still, let me ask questions. Is someone else in it? Um, and then I'd say the support that comes from that cohort environment as well. 
and and to kind of just button it up i'd say too that the enemy program like you won't get this from watching the youtube channel the enemy program provides i viewed it as like this incubator it's really this incubator where we're we're in this space and and i almost want to say like this contained space but that's that, that doesn't even quite define it either because contain might like you know um even imply like okay we're only going to go through this and that is not the case like mac will zig and zag wherever we need to go <laughs> during our time together um but it's an incubator in the sense that it's like really this safe space that's cultivating this um this heightened like exploration like this just really refining that skill to explore to to learn to um um engage yeah, at a different level so and I think also what you absolutely cannot get from the YouTube channels too is like everyone has those questions in their back pocket or for me they're in the front pocket that it's like how do I ask my manager this and then I realized I'm never going to ask my manager some of these things. Sometimes because it's like, they don't got time for this. <laughs> you know, it's important to me and truly it is important, but we know the reality of our work environment. It's like fast paced. You're always trying to prioritize like in the limited time that you have with your manager. Um, and depending on how supportive your manager even is, assuming they are, you know, there's still going to be questions that it's like, where do I take, who do, where do I go with this? Um, uh, and I would say oh, even um, another reality is even questions that it's like, sure, I do have the opportunity to ask my manager, but I don't know that they have the answer to this, or I don't know that they're going to spend the time with me at the level that I need because I'm growing in this area. That's why I have this question. Um, and so that's absolutely next level of, of the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is just the appetizer. This is like a seven course meal <laughs> inside of NMA. So come hungry. <laughs> you like that, Mac? <laughs> I really like that. So I'm stealing that. Thank you. I like that. I, I Yeah, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to steal that. Okay. So then what would you say to someone then that is sitting on the fence about joining? They're like, oh, I want to join, but they're just, just like on the fence. They're not quite sure yet. Yeah, I'd say, well, I 150% recommend taking this next step and joining and investing in yourself. Um, it's You're going to be in, investing and committing to not only have access to an, an effective and re results, like totally proven program, um, but you're going to have that proximity that I was talking about of learning in an environment where others are showing up to do the exact same thing. And you're going to have a caring coach like Mac, a caring and talented coach um, who's completely committed to, to the growth of every student. Um, and so I'd say if, you know, you're really trying to weigh out your options, I mean, sure, do a pros and cons list, but there's absolutely going to be more pros here in this, in this situation. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I'd say you won't regret it. I, I sure didn't. I would say absolutely expect to be challenged, but I hope that's why people are joining the program anyway, um, to stretch out of that comfort zone and to really even define what that comfort zone is and see like, okay, have I been playing kind of small? It's time to, it's time to kind of level up here. Let's, let's go past this, this bubble here that maybe I didn't even realize, um, you know, I was, I was operating in, um, or, or you might be thriving and, um, you know, you're, maybe you're not playing small, uh, but there's, there's so much in the NMA program, um, for really many different, um, just kind of management environments. For people at different um, phases in their in their management career. I mean, yes, it is a new managers accelerator program, but I've seen students come in also that aren't, haven't necessarily just started their role, but they came to realize at some point in their management time they needed to come to this, and um, that's wonderful. And yeah, so I would absolutely recommend it, and um, I'd say do it, do it. Do it you're, like Nike. Just do it. You're in good hands. You're in really good hands with, with Mac. Oh, thank you, Bianca. You're so sweet. 
<laughs> okay, I'm not going to cry. All right. So I have one final question for you. So for our, this question is specifically for like managers that are getting started. Um, what that are listening, what's your advice for them as they get started? Yeah, I'd say stay encouraged and mm -hmm. that's, that's going to take work. Um, it's not just, you know, slap a sticker of stay encouraged. Like, no, it's going to take active work to stay encouraged because the pace of, of managing people, I mean, it's, it'll take a lot out of you. If, if you let it, even if you don't let it, it still will. Still a lot. You, yeah. you got to have, yeah, you got to have that understanding and um, foresight to know that it's, it's going to be a fast paced environment. Uh, there's a lot of people relying on you. There's a lot of people watching you. Um, even people you don't think are watching, you know, you and your, you are observing you and, and, you know, you are entrusted in that role as well for, for a good reason. Like, you know, know that um, you're capable and that growing your skills and, and increasing your capacity um, is, it's not a flaw. It's just a part of being a, a person that we're always growing and learning. So I would say stay encouraged. And um, when I say do that actively, don't be passive. And that is like one example for me is working to grow your professional connections and your support network. And NMA was that for me. It still is. I mean, I'm so thankful for, like I said, the people that I met in the cohort for getting to know Mac and the opportunity to just glean from all of her wisdom and take her program um and um have it I mean you have lifetime access to it too like what is there to think about um so anyway it'll help you now and in the future um and so so yeah I would just say fortify that support network um because without a plan or without that foresight I mean, it is really easy to burn out um, or feel stuck even. Maybe it's not burnout, but you just might feel kind of stagnant or or might, things might kind of feel a little stale in, um, in a difficult circumstance at work that maybe you've just kind of been like, this is what it is. I just kind of dance around this. And it's like, mm, there might be some other approaches to, to address that. Um, and so um, I, I would say be open and uh, to exploring, you know, where you could, grow your network so that um, you're getting more perspectives and you're not like in this um in this bubble or in this um yeah like the blind spots of just not having other people around you that that are seeing and observing you and who are cheering for you really too like genuinely cheering for you so um last thing I'd say is also be coachable and I kind of started with it and I'll bookend with it is like be open to continuously learning. Like we are completely all, I really feel strongly and believe like we're lifelong students at all stages of our life. Um, and so being coachable is, is really not only critical to be in a program like this, but anywhere it is an attribute that uh, you, I hope man, all of us would want to embody um, because it really leads us to a more fulfilling place of where can I grow? What am I doing well? What do I need to do more of? What do I need to do less of? Max saying too, sorry, I'm like totally adding nuggets here, but it's just like, can't help it. It's just flowing. But like, you know, what do I need to start doing, stop doing or do more of? I mean, all of that is so applicable. And, and, and of course, in a work environment, that's what NMA is centered around, but that really applies to everywhere in our lives. So yeah, that 100%. would be percent. So didn't I tell you that this conversation was going to be a juicy one? You know, one of the things that I so admire about Bianca is her ability to get up after she's fallen time and time again. That's that grit that she's got. And, you know, every time she got back up, she was that much better to attack the next time. And so kudos, <laughs> kudos to you, Bianca. Like I said, it was such an honor being part of your journey. Thank you so much for letting me be part of that. Now, for the rest of you watching, if you can resonate, like if you resonated with Bianca's experience, if you too are challenged by difficult conversations and you're feeling like you're isolated in your role as a, as a new people manager, I want you to know that A, you don't need to be alone and B, challenging conversations can become easier.
It's not going to be easy, but it can become easier if you are working with a framework and you have someone that can guide and mentor you through it. So if you're looking for that type of support and you want to feel confident and comfortable in these types of challenging conversations, then I definitely want you to book a call with me using the link below and then check out the new manager accelerator program, because that is literally a huge part of our program is helping you navigate these tough conversations. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope to see you next week. Don't forget to keep smiling and I'll see you in the next one.